you're always in this country. It's your prime yeah. country. This is your home country. It is my home. My, do you know what a, an interesting one is? What's the difference between motherland and fatherland? Don't know. I have no, I have no answer to that question. Wait, you asked me that. I, I you just, said that like you're. I just lobbed it. it over into your side of the court there, as if I'd know. People usually was it Germany was the fatherland or was it Russia was the fatherland? I think it was Germany was the fatherland and Russia was the motherland. There, you you told me I need to be less Republican on this podcast. I use less talk about revolutionaries. So I'm just leaving you swimming away with this one. You don't uh, even know the answer. You said that. Speaking of getting yourself into situations you can't back out of. Go on. I got myself into an awful situation this morning. What'd you do? So I bit off more than I could chew, really. It wasn't more than I could chew, but it was more than I reasonably wanted to chew and more than my back wanted to chew. Mm-hmm. First field. So I was out deer shooting. First field, just getting bright. Stalking my way up through the field to a group of three or four animals at the top corner of it. It's a big field, maybe 20 acres. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> maybe 15. Group of animals comes up in front of me. Whack a stag. Reload. Whack a doe. Great. Perfect. Got a doubler. Just needed two deer. Group of deer runs to the top left-hand corner and joins the other group of deer, which is quickly sighted or uh, range finded. Mm-hmm. Made the adjustment. Whacked another one. Ran to the other corner. Ranged it. Made the adjustment. Whacked a fourth one. But now I'm a kilometre from the Jeep and have a long pull to go. Why were you adjusting... So much with a much distance, much variance when in distance. First shot was like 107 meters. Okay. So obviously no adjustment. Second shot was 150. When's your drop start? The drop. Or when does it meet? When's it zeroed for? It's zeroed for 100. Okay. So it's nine half centimeter clicks to 200. Okay. Which is nothing. Yeah. That's nine centimeters at 200 meters. I st- I, anything beyond 150, I like to start clicking because they're all headshot. Yeah, a fair, fair. So I didn't click for the... If I had had time and the dough wasn't running, I would have clicked for 150, which is, if I remember correctly, four clicks. It's a brand new gun as well. We just got it last week. Do you think that's an acceptable excuse to be late for the office? Do you think that's acceptable, you know? Gareth, I'm late every day. <laughs> <laughs> so if I was to start making excuses now, I actually don't know what I'd say. It's been 61 days and I still haven't shot anything in the season. That's a disgrace. Do you know what's a bigger inhibitory to me going hunting? Isn't a newborn, which was not a problem last year, it's, it's trying to squash a massive PB, trying to squash yeah. 80 kilos is actually more inhibitory. You know, the big heavy squat is just so inhibitory to everything. Everything. Being tired all the time. It's starting to affect jiu-jitsu now. Is it? It just literally, the day before I did 283, super fresh <laughs> jiu-jitsu, really fresh, Galera was really happy, like jiu-jitsu is really good. Since I squatted 283... Galera doesn't talk to you. <laughs> it's got to another level of fatigue where... So I'm kind of gone from squatting like five sessions a week and then I would have always forced in a light session when mm-hmm. I was doing the five sessions a week where I do like 160 or something for like five by five or whatever. Now it's like four main sessions and kind of even some weeks it's like three, you know, which is totally yeah. natural. That's the progression. That's how it works. Yeah. Yeah, that's how you... When you get to those heavier sets, you know. So you make the big weights. Like as I was saying, the day Tushiki told me that's what he did, I knew that's what I wouldn't be doing. But yes. I gave it uh, that go, and I said I would be making some adjustments, you know. Yeah. And those adjustments have come to light. Someone commented on my Instagram. There is like, oh, has this different training style changed your views on volume? And I was like, no, it's actually firmly reaffirmed <laughs> what I know to be true. Yeah. What I already knew to be true for thousands of lifters, but what I am seeing is definitely true is that volume and must go down slightly as intensity goes up. You need to practice some singles at an appropriate point in training. The uh, You can't just do progressively heavier sets of 5x5 five five with some volume, you know? Do you know what the thing as well is? And I think, for, so for people like me, or for the normal person out there who don't have mahoots of squats, mm-hmm. that bear acts so differently at I, those heavier weights. I told you this. Yeah. It's just, it's not the same thing. Yeah. So like, for you to be doing 5x5s five five at 220 or 230 or 240, it's a vastly, vastly different thing mm-hmm. for you unracking 290, 300 or whatever it is, you know. Uh, and I think people miss out on that because the bear doesn't react quite so... Like going from 100 to 120, the bear doesn't change. Going from 180 to 200, the bear doesn't change. 
to be honest, anything north of 250, I think the bear changes massively. Yeah. Like, I felt it going from 230 to 240. As I unracked it, and you told me about it before, I unracked it. I was like, oh, oh, oh no. It was like somebody had put one of those uh, earthquake bears and loaded it without me noticing. I just unracked it. <laughs> this. So that was the day you did the, the squat and the run. Was it the second time? First time. The first time. You hit 230, no problem. And I was like, oh, there, by the way, 240 is different to 230. Just be wary. Uh, but you don't know what you can't tell someone. You have no. to do it, you know? No. When you unracked it, it's... um. It's not even just the oscillation. It's like the oscillation plus how it feels on your back and a certain amount of absolute weight is absolute weight, you know? Yeah. I think as well there's a there's an accumulation of fatigue from that warm-up being that long. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously you don't make the same jumps that somebody who's squatting 140 does, but you still just have to squat more weights more times. Yeah. Because it's three times more weight or it's twice the weight that somebody else is doing. We don't usually talk about that or we don't usually think about it. Most of the time you think like, oh, you simply scale up the squat warm-up or how much squatting's in the warm-up for your 1RM number. Realistically, once the 1RM number gets to a certain point, you have to do all of the steps the other person does Mm -hmm. and three more or four more. And then my current progression is 120, 70, so bar 70, 120, 170, 200, 220, 240, 260, then when I did two eighty three, I went two sixty, two eighty three, uh, but usually it's like two forty, two sixty, two seventy. So I hit two sixty per five, which is an all time PB for for five. But uh, I still I still think I need like two seventy for four to five. Yeah, realistically, uh, the it's just hard to know. So this problem with this style of training is with the higher volume, the fluctuations day to day is massive. And, like, there was one day, this heavy single, the week I hit to, the day, on the Tuesday I hit 260 for five, on the Saturday my top single was 240, I walked out 260, and was like, oh shit, I'm like, this isn't happening at all, and then two days later I did it for an all-time set of five, you know, so that's one of the major problems with this style of training, and we'll go into more in the later when we're finished, but that's a massive issue with it. It's interesting when you look at like a lot of Eastern European systems, they're kind of peaked all year round mm-hmm. and kind of hitting big heavyweights all year round. And it it really gets rid of that issue mm-hmm. where they're just constantly in touch with that weight or they're within 10 or 20 kilos of that weight all the time. Yeah. So they have a very good idea, you know, whereas you're, you're kind of at reaching distance, winding up the punch, whereas they're there just constantly jabbing at the face all the time. Yeah, and they're not really worried about the 1RM so much for no. a lot of it. Like, they're just they're getting to a certain point or a certain weight. The the frequency kind of lines up really what we're saying. You know, like, three is probably the most three meaningful sessions in squatting. Um, but, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, it's... It's, it's just heavy, like... It's just squatting, like, you know. To bring us on to a different heavy topic. Go on. And this is something I was thinking about a lot yesterday for some strange reason. Actually, I'll tell you what the reason was afterwards. But the background is changing. This one? The top, the colour of white. Oh, yeah, Is changing. Yes. So V-shreds. Right. Remember those ads that used oh, to pop yeah. up on everything? Yeah. Um, V-shreds, and I've noticed a few other ads do this really weird thing where they copy Joe Rogan's old background. And Have you seen that? Face. Yes. And it's the red, like the pleated red velvet curtain behind them. I, so, obviously we're doing that. <laughs> I know a podcast, which is in this sphere. A lot of people watching this probably won't know who it is, so I'm not going to say. Mm-hmm. But I know someone else, whoever knows, was on that podcast. And they did the same thing. And it actually got me. I was like, oh, was yeah. I was like, there's no way. they were, Or not no way, but I was like, oh. So the person I saw was like, that could happen. They could be on Rogan. Yeah. And I was like, oh. They're on Rogan. That looks kind of different. I was like, that's strange. And they were doing this clip thing as well. They'd taken that clip, yeah. obviously doing, because they got me. Yeah. And then I saw whose podcast it actually was. And I was like, oh. It works so well, though. But does it, though? What does it do for you? I, to what? be honest, I think the second you see it, it's just familiarity. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, that's the usual seat I sit in at home. I'm going to sit down here for a sec. And it's just, you Retention. just listen. Yeah, you just listen for that bit longer, you know? Yeah. Think if it was a random background, particularly if like the, if it's not a very engaging topic and it's a like a weight loss thing, like for V-shreds, 
how to get a six pack in five steps or whatever everybody's going to scroll past that and the second you have that bit of familiarity in the background you're like oh the he is basically a conglomerate there's a lot of people who millionaires are basically he's like a a liver king pretty yes, much he's I just literally just front. right to say like there was a really good documentary on him we don't see a lot of those fitness documentaries we don't see a lot of those you know there's like an mma is it mma junkie or MMA something he's a really yeah. really good MMA one who makes phenomenal like 30 to 40 minute breakdowns on MMA fighters and they're so in depth and it's like documentary style I love them like binge watched all of them yeah and we just don't really see anyone do that in the fitness industry or in our industry that much until now until well, so we did them with the squat series which yeah. we're coming back to and Zach kind of made his name off those he had a load yeah. of those doesn't do them as much at all anymore or very little yeah but I know he's... Doesn't he work on some big documentary? He is, yeah. What was I this? don't think we can say. Oh, yeah, I can't remember the subject of that one, though. Do you remember? I this? can remember the subject, but I don't. Oh, think. yes, I do. No, yeah. I do. Yes, yes. So it'll be interesting to see if that comes to fruition. I think Zach has an unbelievable way of putting those, like, video essays, mm-hmm. which is what they basically are together. Like, yeah. they're very engaging. They're really well put together. I really like them in sports like MMA. Sports where I'd have dipped my toe in, but I'd be... N- by no means have like a base of knowledge in. Mm-hmm. And then you watch something like that and you're like, oh, I, whoever, Michael Chandler's fighting next weekend. I'm going to watch this. I have some basis in what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it gives you a very good, very engaging way of getting some information. The change in Rogan has been pretty weird the last few years. Rogan back on the ads. Yes, back on the ads. So you, you said that's apparently because he spent so much money on his... Comedy club? That's kind of my theory. Interpretation. From hearing a few different things. Yeah. Apparently the Uh, amount of money he put into that comedy mothership is insane. But surely you couldn't lose all that money. Surely he wouldn't be that frivolous with his finances. I've heard him talk about before that he said he had a finance guy, you know? Yes. Surely someone is not. Surely. But. (laughs) Bad. Bad man. But people just go a bit mental. You know? He seems to have gone a bit mental. I'd say it could easily have been over a hundred million dollars on that club there's no way there's no way 100 percent. it's just a comedy club there's surely no way yeah but think about people building stadiums we did this for a few years ago like (laughs) and two exceptionally skilled (laughs) (laughs) tradesmen yeah two people liable to cut themselves but but we can't talk about cutting ourselves in yeah no it's a sensitive topic go on but i'd say easily a hundred million nah sure easily i see the thing is Someone could have saw him coming and they're like, Joe Rogan, he's a fucked on the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe was like, threw a blank checkbook at him kind of yeah. thing. And your man was like, yeah, okay, let's I, roll. Or I could see it being this really like flamboyant architect. Mm-hmm. Like, no, Rogan, darling, we're yeah. going to have this floating stage, right? Yeah, honey. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it's like... Comes with two little chihuahuas to every meeting. <laughs> the, um, the children's hospital, so a lot of people won't know this. A lot of Irish people will know this and it's an extremely sensitive topic. So there is this enormous state-of-the-art or proposed state-of-the-art facility which should be finished by now being built in Dublin in the capital in a, a terrible location by all accounts. It's a very large children's hospital, the most modern apparently in the world. That was the aim for entirely on kind of pediatric care and children and give them the best services, which absolutely nobody in the country had any problem with. Yeah. So what normally happens in building tenders like that in big companies, let's say you're a pharmaceutical company and you're building a new building, what happens is you put out the tender, you put out the bat signal and you're like, I need a new building with these specs built for approximately this much this is our proposed value of this and building contractors Daryl will come in and Owen will come in and Seek Strength will come in and we'll be like I'll do it in six months and Daryl will be like I'll do it in five months for a hundred million less and you know they outbid each other and the pharmaceutical company will have a very good evaluation of what it is so they'll know that if someone gives them half the value in half the time they'll be like that's not feasible but if someone comes in like five percent cheaper or a percentage cheaper yeah and a month faster or two months faster they're like that's great because that could save us 50 million and we could make 50 million in, in two weeks or something or two months you know so that's what happens normally most industries and if you sign the contract and you are you break that, it's your own fault. You yeah. have to get it done or you will be legally eradicated from the earth, you know, in those kind of scenarios. What seemed to have happened with this one, the bills from the government, is as usual, they fucked it up. So basically, it's originally was supposed to be something like two or three hundred million. 
budget, which was obviously a reasonably large budget, but the economy is pretty big in Ireland at the moment. I think it's beyond the billion mark now. It's getting close to the billion mark in cost, and it's not even finished. Yeah. It is... It's lunacy, yeah. Lunacy. Yeah. It's crazy. It's sad as well. If that was something else, if that was like a national stadium... Yeah. You'd be like, oh, look, it's annoying or whatever. It's a massive taxpayer bill, but... Yeah. It's not like vital to the lives of children. Yeah. The ineptitude is outrageous. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. It seems to be, yeah, it seems to be uh, just... But you could have gone there when you cut your your leg, you know. My leg is up the walls. At can the I moment. see? I haven't actually seen you any can bandages. See it, yeah. So Dara cut his leg when he was growing. Like, oh, it's tiny. What's wrong with you? You made it out to be a massive thing. Just a little baby, <laughs> a little baby cut. <laughs> it's a baby. How deep is the cut? It's to the fascia. It's been gone the whole way through the skin. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Um, so it sounds a lot more gruesome than it is, but it's splitting open the chest of a deer mm. on the mountain. Yeah. Um. And so imagine my two heels are nuzzled into the armpits and I'm starting at the bottom of the sternum and pulling the knife up to the clavicle. Mm-hmm. And really sharp knife, it just zips through the breastbone, no bother, through the cartilage to like rib joint. Just zip it through, didn't even notice. I just thought I like banged my heel, my hand off my shin or something. Mm-hmm. And then finished off loaded the deer and I was like oh I was washing the knife in the the lake and I was like oh I have a hole in my pants <laughs> and then I pulled my pants up but I was like oh I have a hole in my jeans and then I had a hole in my sock and then I had a hole in my leg hole in your leg yeah no stitches though because they were afraid there was animal particles but, yeah the doctor said he's treating it like an animal bite oh and so he'll have to more antibiotics number five seven seven Four for staff. You got West Nile fever as well. <laughs> no, red velvet. Four for staff, one for Lyme's disease. So that's five. And one for red velvet cake disorder. <laughs> what was the name of that? Scarlet fever. Scarlet and now I've won for <laughs> stabbing myself. <laughs> red that's outrageous. No, Seven you are loads. fucked. You I'm going to be Gordon Ryan. In test. Oh my God. You're not enough trend to be Gordon Ryan though. Yeah. Or any trend, actually. Maybe that's <laughs> yeah, what you're missing. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that is the issue. Yeah. How are you feeling now? I feel grand now. So this is funny enough. Of feels grand. As I was on, as I caught myself, I was already on antibiotics. Mm-hmm. And the doctor is like, oh, so it's doxycycline for Lyme disease uh, from a tick bite. It's also used to treat like the clap or some STD infection <laughs> just before anyone, before anyone calls it out. I know that one. But... So the doctor is like, you're actually really lucky. 85% of what you could get from this cut is already covered by Doxy. So I just need to take five more days starting today of my new my new and improved antibiotic. Um, I had to get a tetanus. You had to get a tetanus shot? Yeah, I told the nurse my tetanus story and she absolutely <laughs> pissed herself laughing. Uh, I think, have I told that on the podcast you before? You definitely have not told that on the podcast. So <laughs> this is actually... <laughs> So funny. The second they told me I had to get a tetanus, I was like, oh my God. So years ago, I was 19, I'd say, I was working in France, maintenance on a campsite, cleaning up, all that random stuff. First day on the job, there's a hundred and something barbecues that have just rusted away over the winter. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking apart these barbecues. I start the first few by unscrewing them, unbolting them, taking them apart, putting them in a skip. 10 or 20 barbecues in, I'm like, there has to be a quicker way. So I turned the barbecue upside down, grab both legs and just smash my leg through it and it would just pop off perfect. 20 barbecues later, so we're 40 barbecues in, I go to drive my leg through the barbecue, the leg just disintegrates and drives itself like an inch into my calf, folds in on it. So big rusty oh, leg of a barbecue. Yeah, It's Bastille Day in France. Is it Bastille? They're freedom like day. the yeah. freedom day. Yeah, yeah, independence, yeah, Bastille, yeah. So everywhere's closed. Can't get in anywhere. I'm like washing it out with vodka. Can't get it sorted. Go another. I actually injured myself to Bastille Day the next year as well. So got it cleaned out. Went to the doctor the next day. But everyone I was working with was like, Fitz, you're going to have to get an injection in your ass. And I was like, oh my God. I'm like 18 or 19. I'm going to get some needle up my ass. This is going to be horrendous. Not thinking that it was going into my glute. Mm-hmm. Thinking it was actually going in what? my ass. How did you think that? Because it was 
dumb. Like, yeah, that's fair. It's still there. And so obviously up the walls, went to the doctor. Doctor had not got a word of English. Like countryside doctor, maybe half an hour from the coast. So doctor's cleaning it out, scraping at it. Like I actually think he was getting pleasure from the amount of pulling and tearing he was doing at my leg. Mm-hmm. Think he put a couple of stitches in it. And then he's like, oh, tetanus, tetanus. I was like, oh, yeah, need a tetanus, you know? Yeah, what's that in French? Tetanus. No, but you say I need? Oh, I was like, oh, wait, ouais, très bien. Or something along those lines, like double thumbs up. Mm-hmm. We're good to go, right? Yeah, roll on, brother. So he was like, oh, um, make prepare, make prepare. And he turned around and he was like drawing up the tetanus into the needle at his little desk thing. So I was sitting on the inspection bed. And I've been told to make prepare for my tetanus. So I whip my pants down and my jocks. And I'm just like from below the belly button as naked as the day I was born. And I'm just sitting there with my two little legs dangling over the edge of the bed. He comes over, doesn't say a word and sits next to me on the bed, rolls up my sleeve. (laughs) And gives me the tetanus injection and just like started roaring laughing he after did. it he, of course he did I was there with my fucking dick out sitting on the bed was he the- was like okay thank you and walked away ah <laughs> uh, that's not fair you, they're micro penis he couldn't even see it I know he's like you said to go to mail <laughs> uh, but yeah I told the nurse that she thought it was the funniest thing ever so I got my leg cleaned they're not stitching it because they need to leave it because it's a puncture wound to push out yeah it's gonna heal from the inside out the you know the way obviously we would have been exposed to a lot of American TV shows when we were younger. Yeah. Obviously, growing up on a farm and doing lots of farming when I was younger, ha- routinely cut by rusty nails and stuff. You yes. Know? But uh, tetanus obviously isn't that common. Yeah. But uh, I remember every time I get cut because you've been Americanized by the shows and be like, Dad, I, do I need a tetanus shot? I'm like, Nah, you're grand. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, so. We get tetanus when we're vaccinated as babies, don't we? I, th- I think you do, yeah. I think you do. You get some amount of vaccines. Yeah. Do you, you know, it's so weird. But since the CVID, right. t- talking about vaccines, and like I know there's like a percentage of people listening to this, hopefully not many of our listeners, who are like bristling now. They're like, vaccines, is it? <laughs> vaccines, yeah. It's like, do you want a dog when the hair on their back starts to stand up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're getting vaccinated now, are we? We've talked about that. You know, yeah. like, um, obviously... My son has gotten these vaccines, got all of them since, until he's gone to school, and he's gotten fucking loads of them. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. way to put it, you know. And, yeah. Um, he, he's gotten all the vaccines, but it's weird, even, it feels like a dirty word now saying It vaccines. really does, doesn't it? Do you know whose fault that is? That is Rogan's, Rogan's fault. It's Joe Rogan's it's fault. Joe Rogan's he fault. still talks about it. He still talks about it as if he's won the battle, or won yeah. the war, sorry. And no one else cares, and you've been proven wrong, like, shut the fuck yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> It's mental. I I don't even want to talk about the vaccine. Yeah, it's just weird when you say the yeah. You say any of those things now, yeah. you're like, or if you just even mention that, you're like, oh, it's my boy got his vaccines. Yeah, and uh, oh, you're doing that, are you? Yeah, and you're like, are we are, are, <laughs> are, we, are we okay? Is this a show? <laughs> is this a social faux pas now? Or it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It, feel, like, it feels like a dirty word now to say. Yeah, yeah, it really does. Vaccine hesitancy. Oh Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's yeah. I feel like it's that way as well about like a lot of regular normal opinions. How do you mean? Regular opinions that would have been perfectly normal to have ten years ago, such as that are now like. Hmm. Can you say them? I can say them, but there's like three of them coming to mind, and they're all pretty hmm right now. So you told me be less Republican on this episode. Yeah, I know. And now you're bringing. Yeah, up, now <laughs> people are wondering if it what isn't the talking. consequences of my actions. Can you name any of those ones you're thinking of? I just think that there's. Give me a soft core version of one of them. This isn't ten years ago, but it's not that much longer. Where like you would have gotten a slap from a parent when you were growing up, and that's a big heavy no now. And you can't you can't say what ones. We are talking about not no not the other ones that come to mind right now. <laughs> <laughs> and the way my brain works is only those ones are there right now. The other ones coming. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to know what ones you're talking about now. The yeah. talking about a dog with hair standing up on his back. I was bringing the Murphinator for a walk the other day. Murphy poodles. Yesterday, and we we're in the woods. Gorgeous black Labrador cross uh, was there getting walked by his owner as well. Yeah. 
So Murphy hasn't been socialised around a lot of dogs, but he gets socialised every day now. It's like forcing him to be with other dogs all the time. Yes. Just pushing him into it. So he was like, this other black lab was like vibrating with excitement to go and say hello to him, you know? Yeah. Murphy was like a little bit freaked out, a little bit didn't know what was going on. And he had all the hair in his back standing up. And the woman came along. She's like, "Oh, a R- Rhodesian Ridgeback, they're just gorgeous." So yeah. It's like, nope. no, <laughs> it's a really fr- afraid Vishla. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looked like he had it. <laughs> it looked <laughs> like they actually look so like Ridgebacks I when told they you stand that. up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying to you. When he's angry, you'll see like yeah, they're yeah, so yeah. visible. If he's actually angry on the on the Vishlas, unlike the Rhodesian Ridgeback, though, the Vishla aren't bred to take down lions. You know, what's hilarious is Labradors are really excited and they're walking. It's like they have a pendulum on the back. Oh my and they God. can't even walk straight. Their whole yeah. body is just like swinging back and forth. Yeah. Trying to get over to where they're trying to go. I brought Seiko to the woods yesterday to walk with Murphy. Mm-hmm. Seiko's 10 or 11 now. Black Lab. She's just out of shape. She's been spending too much time being fed by my nephews uh, from the table. But mm-hmm. she's, so she's obviously half as fast as Murphy is has half the energy mm-hmm. but by god when you throw that little duck decoy into the the woods mm-hmm. she comes back with it every single time comes back first comes back gets to it first finds it first brings it back first she's a retriever though isn't it he's yeah, not as he's well. not they can I looked it up last night they can be trained to retrieve they're trained to point yeah it's not in them to no. retrieve as much it's because all her thing is retrieving she just loves bringing things back get them and get them back bring it back baby she's got experience doing them you know she's got a couple Football's of years bringing home she has a lot of years yeah she's a withered you know she's like a grizzled old rugby player <laughs> yeah like she's got that experience on yeah. him you know youth and talent is no match for treachery and yeah that's, experience that's the thing i was trying to think of yeah, yeah. she um she loves it yeah. she just loves it so much no bother with the fireworks from uh the murphy no bother was there many in the village the town every fifteen to thirty seconds, but there's there's like thirty or forty thousand people in Carrigline, is there? Thirty something, yeah. It's not really a town anymore. Is this still a town? I think it is a town. Yeah, it was like it was like a war zone in our village. Yeah, uh, but he hates it. But Bailey just doesn't give a fuck. Doesn't care. Yeah, came. we've never had a dog who cared about it. I know Afric's old dog really cared. Yeah, um, he used to get really upset by it. But same thing with like Thunder, would really scare him. I just don't get it. It's anyone I used to know who went to got fireworks and let them off in towns and villages was the dumbest cunt. <laughs> they were always the thick fellas, like you know. It was Me and Garfield a bit of a disagreement over it. It's like seeing the firework off, and they're like, Duh, "That's all." But it's it. so that's literally the noise in my head that happens when I see it. Yeah, like, that's that class. No, of all the bollocking, and you don't like ass, it. Prick assing we did when I was younger. That was one thing that just never... I was always like, no, we're clearly just annoying people now. Like, And it's like minor explosives. I'd say in like fifth or sixth class in primary school, one of the lads came back with bangers. Mm. Like the little baby sticks of dynamite, maybe the size of your thumb. Yeah. And I remember for a whole day just up in his place, there's like fields behind his house and Joe, big cow pats mm. that have just dried in like over the course of summer, dried in. Yeah, I know well. And you just light it, whack it down into the cow pad and run. And you just spent the whole day getting rained on by cow shit. The little ones you throw on the ground? Or is no, this no. Lit? It's like a baby stick of dynamite and you'd light the little fuse on top. Mm. Oh my God. What's the fuel for those? Or what's the propellant? I actually don't know. Some sort of black powder. Okay, okay. It's definitely some derivation of black powder. It's not like the gunpowder you'd have in a rifle bullet. Like... It's like- Anyone using illegal fireworks, <laughs> you're soft in the head. Like, it's just... They're so fun, though. No, you're like, I know exactly what kind of person you are if you're doing that in the town of the village. I've just no time for it. Cause you around know, the villages, yeah. Around the villages, wrong. Like, like, I like shooting guns. Yeah. Messing. <laughs> I fucking love guns. I fucking love guns, I do. <laughs> but just the fireworks in the village is just stupid. Like, you're just a dumb cunt. Like, I feel so strongly about Yeah, that. you do feel strongly about it. We're messaging a group chat with one of our other buddies. and He agreed with me, though. He did, yeah. I feel like both of you are just acting like very old fellas. Like, no, like, that's not that stuff I wouldn't way mind. into bed. But that's one thing, you know. When yeah. You, like, you're just bothering other people there. Like You really are bothering them. What yeah. do you get out of that, though? I don't get it's it. Just a boom. Do you know the know? noise you made? Make that noise again. Duh. Yeah, that's it. That's what they're making. <laughs> do you know when you're watching professional fireworks? Yeah. Even after a couple of seconds, it's like, oh. That does nothing for me. But why did the illicit one? It's the bang. Like, it's just the danger and the explosions and it's in your hands. and Yeah. That's the fun thing. Do you know when you... 
you hear of them hurting themselves. I'm like, oh, that's terrible. That's there is a fellow in our school, Aaron. I probably shouldn't have said his name, but anyway. I can beep it out. He was missing for like a few days in school. I forgot all about this till he heard, said someone hurting themselves. Yeah. You know cap guns? Yeah. So he got like the revolver caps for a cap gun, <laughs> which is like a roll. I know, yeah. And you, so he took a little, uh, this is hilarious. He took a needle, scraped out the middle of those for like 112 shots or whatever. Okay. And had a massive pile of this in front of him. Oh, no. And then he's like, <laughs> number 101, scraping out the inside of it, bang, boom, <laughs> and just blew and like burnt all the inside of his hand. Fucked himself. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember he came back in school and I was like, what were you going to do with all of it? And he's like, I don't know, but it was going to be class. <laughs> and he was dead right. It How would have been he? class. How old is he then? Like, was he like I'd 12 say or 15? Second year in secondary school. Okay, so okay. So he's old 13 enough. 13 or 14. He's old enough to know, so. Yeah. there, Like, because there's ages where you know you're just being a cunt, you know? Yeah. Slightly younger. And if you're like preteen and stuff, I'm like definitely more. Yeah. Especially as a parent, I'm, I'm a bit more lenient for those people. But as soon as you're hitting the teenage years, you're like, no, you fully understand the consequences of your actions. <laughs> we used to make mud balls, sort of clay. Mm-hmm. Now, the ground around us is really clay. That's where the pottery is in Clarigline. Yeah. Everything's yellow. And that's mm-hmm. where the river is called the Onabui, the Yellow River. Mm-hmm. So he's making little balls of clay. And you take... And in ter- this is so dumb now that I'm saying it out loud. You take turns standing in front of the garage doors. Mm-hmm. And they were like big old timber doors. My parents got them secondhand when they built the shed 30 years ago. Yeah. Take it in turn, standing in front of the door, and then the others would make clay balls and throw them at you. But it was grand, because most of the time they wouldn't hit you, and anyway, it was just clay. Yeah. And I remember standing there one day like this, and one of these balls just hit my hand and just split the top of my finger open. I had the scar for years. Was there a stone in it or something? A razor-sharp piece of shale Lovely. inside in it. That's- just split clean through my hand. <laughs> we, used to, we used to throw lumps of shit at each other like yeah. as in like mud f- mud fights which is so funny I remember one time my brother did throw one and there was a massive stone yeah it did hit him in the head yeah I feel like the same divilment that I love when I when people like me would blow up fireworks mm-hmm. is the same divilment you'd get from throwing mud at each other yeah it's a, sim- it's a similar thing you know it is like it's just acting the bollocks like but you know when you, you know when you're going out now, like, what what going is going out drinking? Yeah, yeah. Do you know, like? Do you ever find there's times where you just want to be quieter in the pub? I I've always liked the quiet pub though. Yeah, I, I feel hate like, clubs. Did you feel like that when you were younger though? Always, like, late yeah. teens. Always. I always felt like that, but I feel like you couldn't say it. Oh, you say it. Yeah, but it didn't matter though, because there's nowhere. It didn't matter because you wouldn't be going anywhere. There's else no, anyway. there was nowhere to go that yeah. was quieter. I used to. You know, what I really hate. It was like a pub the size of the studio. And some fellow set up in the corner. Oh my god! Massive, massive speaker. Yeah. And it was regardless if he's good at singing or not, and he just starts blaring away, and you're just like, I, "There's a night ruined." A fellow playing live music, I don't even mind as much as the DJ starting. There's no need for a DJ to start at half eleven in a local pub. Like. No. Absolutely no need. But nobody dances in a lot of these places. It's not like there's jiving going on or anything. You know. No, but they don't even bob their heads. Like we're no. a load of Irish people. Everyone's trying to just talk louder. Everyone's trying to get drunk enough so when they go home they can sleep. Did you did you, <laughs> did you like going to nightclubs? Do you like going to nightclubs? I hate going to nightclubs. I, I didn't mind it for a period of time. The I only like period of time I liked it was when I was in college in Limerick. Yeah, it was. there was a time for it, you know. There was a time for it. I really don't like clubs, though. I'd, I'd live in a pub for the rest of my life. Do people still go to clubs? Did, yes. Did Gen Z go to clubs? Yes. But don't they have all that social anxiety? So, I mean, are they going? No, they still go clubbing. Do they really? Yeah, they do. Uh, but do you think numbers are down? I'd say numbers overall are down. Yeah. Numbers for drinking. People definitely drink less. People drank, our parents' generation drank every single day. Mm-hmm. Every day. And uh, it's not like a bottle or two, it's going to the pub for pints. But that's all you have to do, you know. Now you can sit in the toilet and look on TikTok. And you can make you can look waste an hour, you know. I can't watch TikTok. But why? Oh, self control. Don't have it on my phone. Yeah. You don't have self control to put it away. 
no, I I have the control to understand I wouldn't be able to control myself without <laughs> it. I'm actually very proud of my self-control when it comes to uh, social media. Yeah. I just never got on people like, I'm going to delete them all now. And they're like, or just... Could you, I hear, yeah, that's ridiculous. Could you not just not look at them when you're not supposed to? Now there's part of me, mm-hmm. if I had a different job and a different life, mm-hmm. who'd have like one of those flip phones that you buy in the post office that just has WhatsApp. Yeah. Is the podcast machine still on? Still rolling. That's... Jeez, that'd be lovely. What do you mean? Just no... Nothing. Just calls, texts and WhatsApp. I had a flip phone at one point. I had the Motorola flip phone. The what Motorola Razor. Was it a black one? It was like black and silver. It was what all the bad guys in the movies had. The Razor was the straight up flip. That's what I had. I had the... The little... The floor lover. Yeah. And you had to work through the... Uh... You had a slide... I, no, I had to flip and this, I had to slide oh, did as well. you? That wasn't the most durable. Slide, slide is fucking dope. That was very durable. Yeah. You just go, and just yeah, go. That's there's people sick. listening. But most of our audience are our age, though. Yeah. But there's a significant, there's like one in five of the audience who are late teens, early 20s now. Yeah. And they're like, what the fuck are they What are you talking about? There used to be phones where there was buttons on them. And then you'd flip and they've them they've seen them on TV. And you'd just f- slide yeah, it up. Just, and it was, uh, I had one of, I think I had two of those in a row. And I had one of them for ages. Yes. And one night I was cycling home and I was living in the country. This was maybe 15 years ago. Okay. Very little light pollution. Yeah. And you could see the Milky Way, the like clear night I've yeah, ever seen yeah, it. Yeah. And I was literally like this. <laughs> I was working in my, my, my uncle's garage really late. It was like 11 or 12 o'clock, cycling yeah. home. And I was like, oh my God. And it fell, smashed oh. on the floor and I cycled over it. Oh, it no. broke the screen, but it still worked. Yeah. But the screen was fucked. There was no killing those phones. like No killing it. No. Nearly killed myself cycling over it. I dropped, this was when I was 15. I had, this was pretty fucking sick. Prepare yourself for this. Right. So on the front. Okay. It was like a t- touch screen. Mm-hmm. There, there was just buttons underneath the screen. Yeah. So that was that. And then you slid it sideways and it had a QWERTY keyboard. Hang on, say that again. So oh, it went like this. Yeah, I remember that phone. Sick. Who made that? Was it, no- was it Nokia? It was Nokia. I'd I say. remember looking at that phone, being like, "That's too dumb." I wanted to say Sony Ericsson, but it wasn't Sony Ericsson. Did you use it for long? It was a great phone, as great as phones went back then. Yeah, but I was in the gym, and one of our like exercises that so we were like fifteen. One of the exercises was you put a bar on blocks until it's just underneath your your patella tendons set up and you do like static holds like max effort isometric pull from that position so basically just so we'd have a start position so we could go on to normal deadlifts after yeah and we used to always load it to 170 and then i remember like a few weeks in being like no 120 surely loads and then I just lifted 120. I was like, oh, I lifted 120. <laughs> and I dropped the bear. Yeah. The bear clearly rolled off the blocks and landed straight on my phone. No. Didn't notice. There was just like a big crash. Everyone was like, oh, whatever's happening, right? Yeah. And then like 20 minutes later, I was going over to like hamstring curl board thing over in the corner or something like that or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, my phone's over here. That's really weird. But my phone had just been Smash. ejaculated across the room. I we broke a phone in cleans before. You know those inch radius or inch um, diameter barbells. You know the really small ones, spinning a lot of collars or whatever. And yes, like sand filled and and cast iron weights. Yeah. and uh, I was like doing a proto clean, like the early evolution of a clean <laughs> before I got to college, and smashed my phone just. Oh, in your pocket. Yeeted into my pocket. Bent arms straight into the straight into that pocket and smashed the phone. Yeah. It's sad. You know, it's Are you gonna talk about the office being haunted because the door just opened? You're not supposed to say it out loud or they'll get us. Oh no. But isn't it weird how phones just slowly became so integral? I remember being in college. Like we're not we're not old, we're only thirty, right? But it just yeah. things happen so fast or whatever. I remember just leaving my phone in college when I went home some weekends. You just be like, oh, just forgot it. It didn't even matter because you couldn't play any music off it. There was no podcast. There was no yeah. music. It was CDs in the car or maybe a USB stick. Yeah, there was no unlimited that or whatever. So you'd have to connect to Wi Fi. So you just have your laptop or something. I remember there were times where I'd, for, I, if I went home for the weekend, sometimes we just 
leave my phone. I just I forgot. Really? It just wasn't even a thing where you're like, oh, I got to have my <clears throat> phone with me, you know? I think the thing that was different for me is we were selling turf and selling blocks. Mm -hmm. And everything was through the phone. Yeah. So even when we were like 17 or 18, everything was still yeah. glued to it. I do remember though, internet on the phone suddenly becoming... Remember 48 months, that mobile network? I do, yeah. I remember signing up for 48 months, probably in sixth year of school or first year in college, mm -hmm. and being like, oh, I have free everything now, and it costs me no money. Did they have no reception, though? Wasn't that the thing with them? Yeah. Yeah, they had no reception. I think they were on, like, the O2 masts or something. Yeah. And the O2 used to give them secondary use of the masts or something. That was it, yeah. Yeah. They turned out to be a bit of a... Well, they had some deal for college students as well, wasn't that it? That was it. As long as you were a student, you could keep that old rate or something like that. Yeah. I remember there being like war when I stopped using them. I think I stopped using them because I got a company phone when I had the gym, which would have been like 14. my fourth year in college. That's my fourth year, which was my second year in, in UL. Today was in 16, I would say. 2015? Mm-hmm. And I remember I went to change and then, you know, you have to do the whole thing where they change your number over and then you're off the network completely and then you have to go on Vodafone or whatever it was. It was just an absolute nightmare. Yeah. And it ends up costing you three times more. The uh, I do worry about, like, for my son and stuff, you know, like, what, when do you give him a phone? Like, when do you get him a phone? Ideally, as little and as late as possible, you know? Yeah. But the thing is, it's unfortunately a community thing. So, like, if all his friends have phones... You know, there is arguments made that you're artificially impacting him. Yeah. You know, is the negatives of him being isolated for no reason? Or is there negatives for him having the phone? Is there any negatives from having a phone? It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Like, when do they even have the freedom to be, like, on the phone on their own? Yeah, that's the thing, like... I, I mean, can imagine a kid having a phone really early when it's just calls and texts. Mm -hmm. And, like, the parents keep an eye on the text or something. I'm sure there's loads of software. Yeah, there that feels kind of invasive too, though. I've, software. Yeah, they're looking over the shoulder. Like I'd far to be in a position where you just trust them, yes. which is what my parents did for us, basically. Yeah, they trusted us. Yeah, and it it did work out very well. You know, there was very mostly. Well, you just got to do basically anything. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how you turned out. You know, that's there was just an explicit trust there. Mm -hmm. I misplaced like what you had <laughs> absolutely it. misplaced. I think it was just being the younger child. Like I imagine both of my sisters got a much harder going over in terms of rules and stuff like that. Like I remember hanging out with people when we were maybe sixteen, seventeen, and they'd have like a curfew. They'd have to be home by the time, and I'd be like, my parents wouldn't even notice if I didn't come home. Yeah, I do. My older brothers pushed the boundary so far. Yeah. I just didn't have any interest in pushing it as far as they did. Okay. So I never felt like I was that restricted, to be honest. Yes. I never felt like there was ever... I never really would stop doing anything, to be honest. I think that's important, though, because the people I knew who lost their minds the most... Yes. ...were also the most restricted when they were younger. Yeah, like, my brothers just weared, <laughs> wore down my parents so much. They just gave in by the time they got to me, you know? Yeah. The Yeah, you did see that in college a lot of times when people got there first. The people who were the most heavily restricted oftentimes. But then there was also people who I knew were super wild in school when I went to college were still loose. Yeah. And it didn't work out for them, you know? They're different issues with the same problem at the end of it, I think. Yeah. Different causes, maybe. I don't know. Mm. Who knows? So, do you have, like, a, an age in mind? I suppose, with your young flea, he's so young at the moment. Who knows what's going to change? Who knows what, yeah. Let, ten years' time. That still, could be, like, an AI that lives in a chip in his brain. What's this, 2013? No, 2023. <laughs> I remember signing up to Instagram in 2015. Okay. So, that's not even ten years ago, and look how much things have changed. So. I wonder when I signed up to Instagram. It's, I was after the Europeans I remember when I came back from European seniors I signed okay. up to Instagram but like who who even knows what's going to be here in 8, 10 years time I'd say even 3 or 4 years time the way things have gone at the moment in the last 4 months with AI like mm -hmm. it used to take us 3 times the length of the podcast to edit the podcast and now this week there's just a massive editing tool that's just come out Yeah, so which was... means like we could have you're talking about hundreds of hours that could have been saved. There's been a lot of videos where the audio has just been really weird. You just get these weird artifacts in audio sometimes 
and they Adobe have brought out this thing, a tool online, Adobe Podcast, where even if we like we missed it for the Kelly Starrett podcast, but one of the bits of audio from one of the podcasts was particularly bad, and I was like, "Shit, can we try and fix this?" Mm. Surely we were looking to see if we could hire someone to fix it because it was it was a Tammy episode, yeah, because series of unfortunate events one of the memory cards had broken so we'd one only one memory card and we're up in in dublin recording it yeah uh, you linked it up from the camera straight to the mics so we did a test obviously and it's on yeah. the fine but that aux cable just turned out to be a little bit bunk a little bit bunk a little bit too long mm-hmm. too much movement and it was almost unlistenable yeah uh, it was just too annoying There's it too was many, problematic problematic too many artifacts and i said surely there's some ai you can do this sign up to adobe and a fairness to adobe you pay for their, we pay for their monthly suite. Their suite has a lot of things. Yeah. Brought this out. And for the whole day, I just kept saying to Dara, I was just flabbergasted by how good it made the audio. I just couldn't, because I, because there's so many times. Yeah. There were so many times where we just got in a video and one of us has spent hours trying to fix it in Premiere Pro. Yeah. Or a different one, look at videos, trying to sort it. And it just still sounded shit at the end of it. Yeah. And then we just eventually would have been like, why didn't they just record the video? In well, the we time, used to do that so often. There'd be times where you just, by the time you'd rec- you try to fix it, yeah. you'd spend three hours trying to fix it, you would have had the video done two hours ago. And yeah, it. yeah, yeah. It was just so hard to give up. Yeah. There were so many of those cases. And then I just put it into the software, uploaded it, came back, select the level of strength do you want to enhance it. And it was just perfect. Mm. And it just fucked me up for the day. <laughs> Because it was this particular thing. You know, when we saw all those AI things in chat, GTP, yeah. and Photoshop are out there, beta and stuff. We tried those and we were like, it's not, it's cool, but it's not that impressive. It's not, yeah. it's not really doing anything. People can still do this better. Yes. But this did it. So if you were to price this, you'd be about a week getting it back or more. We need to get that episode up that day or the day after, ideally. The quality it came back in was so much better than anyone could do. Because it it, in, it inserted, from what I can gather, predicted sounds yeah. in her tone and our voices that were just what they should have been. It matched them so well. I'm yeah. sure, look, someone clearly could do it because it came from someone else. Yeah. But I, the, it was free. Yeah. Well, the subscription, it just blew my even, mind. Even that, though, I, there's a lot of stuff, like it would take out like cable noise. Like I don't know if this even coming through, but it would take out that cable noise. How did it know? That's not doable. With just normal software. Like if you're doing it on your own, you know, if you're clipping. So like a really common edit we used to have to do is me and Gurf would be recording videos on different mics, maybe over Zoom or something like that. And you'd have to go Gurf audio, Dar audio, Gurf audio, Dar audio, Gurf audio, Dar audio. And basically, instead of having two streams of audio, you end up with clip, 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 clip. I can understand how people can do that. People can do it way faster. You pay them to do it. But in cases like the cable noise or that stuff going on in the background, like we use compressors and filters a lot on the audio, which makes a massive difference. But without that AI, I've never heard cable noise being fixed like that. How did it know cable noise was a thing that was not supposed to be on it? How did it know it was an artifact? Okay, maybe you could say on podcasts that cable noise is a distinct noise that might not want to be on. Yeah, yeah. And it's specific to software. But this didn't exist a couple of months ago like it's just it's the amount of hours and money it saved flabbergasted me in the quality you know because there's plenty of other things where the result just isn't that good and there's yeah we everyone gets those emails now if you run a company and you're like new ai it'll like there was one that emailed us saying changes your videos into books or pdfs or yeah. something or, or whatever i like none of them are great the premiere or the photoshop generative generative fill. generative fill generative fill, like, wasn't that great it was good it's it's that useful is, in certain cases, but a person would definitely be better. Yeah, or you just get a better picture. Like yeah. you, your source material is still more important. But this has taken some of the Zoom ones. So there was one with Dr. Steph, if you heard that podcast. That audio was very listenable. It was good, more than mm-hmm. acceptable. But it changed in audio, as far as I'm concerned, and you're listening to it, that he was in the room with us. It was nearly that good. Yeah. Like, it is. It's just blown my mind. Yeah. Another thing was the AI software we're using for the chatbot in, C- in the Seek Strength app. 
That's insane. So we trained that in a load of questions and obviously we knew every single question we gave it. And so at one point when we were asking it questions, we purposely asked it a question that we hadn't trained it on and it gave a very good answer and it, we were both just like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's crazy. There's there's kind of, so obviously since a lot of people have signed up to the app and a lot of people are running through and you could see people just asking certain questions, they're just asking to see how it will react. As you but, do. As you do, 100%. Just so you know, we can see every question you're asking. So <laughs> just be clearly careful when you're asking a weird question. There's certain people listening to this being like, oh no. <laughs> we can see those questions. Girl, I didn't really want to know how big it is. <laughs> I don't, we can't see who asked them though, can we? Yeah, we can. Oh, we can't see who asked them. Yeah. Okay, so just so you know, if you're asking weird questions and we happen to see it, just know. Yeah. We think you're weird. <laughs> the, <laughs> but this is the other crazy thing is like there's maybe... 30 or 40 questions now that it's being retrained on mm-hmm. which is really weird because you can go back and ask it the same question next week and the answer is going to be different are you enjoying so you've kind of spearheaded the training yeah. how are you finding that I find it so interesting the things it hasn't wrapped its head around yet yes because there's certain things where you're like so obviously it's been trained on a massive amount of content and one thing the app does really well and one thing a lot of our programs are written for is like concurrent training right so you might want to run weightlifting while you do the squats or you might want to do the press program while you run becoming a horse and those programs are are really well written to mesh into each other Mm -hmm. because it's been trained on so many videos a lot of our videos are somebody saying oh i want to do marathon running while I do a powerlifting total or I want to do X while doing Y at the same time and a lot of our sentiment in those videos like you're talking about thousands and thousands of questions that we've answered a lot of our sentiment in those is like pick one thing and do it really well and then go and focus on something else after and so in certain cases where it's asked somebody might say will I run the RTA while doing weightlifting the program or the coach bot returns pick one thing and do it really well obviously it phrase it better than that but now we've retrained it to say okay these are the programs you can run together or we're training it to do these are the programs you should run together these are the programs you shouldn't run together and this is roughly how you should do it so we were saying you know it would get a lot better and that's kind of one of the things we said in the, the breakdown is like as more people ask us we'll be able to train it better you know yeah because until you put something out into the field, you're never just going to know how it's going to perform. So there's been a couple of answers we've got in the back. We feel like just, oh, or it'll be like, a, um, there'll just be a word that's in there instead of another word. And it changes the whole context of the se- sentence. Yeah. And you're like, oh, that definitely needs to be changed right now. That's uh, That can't be saying that to people, you know, and it changes like the whole context or whatever. But in a year's time, it's going to be something ridiculous, you know? It's going to be crazy, yeah. But you know what's weirder than that? Go on. At some point, we'll probably be able to use an AI. Probably not that far away where it's going to be able to give them a voice answer from us. Yeah, that's, that's really That's going weird. to fucking... That's the really weird one. I don't know if I'd the ever voice that. one or the pictures of our faces yeah. as if it's us talking. To be honest, I don't think I want that. I don't think I want that either. The chatbot is fine because it's like, it's our knowledge... You're getting the answer, yeah, and it's still or not that we can see the answer and we change answers and yeah. we're monitoring it. But it giving you us talking is that's too far. That's too far. No, nah, that's too weird. It's too out there. What I really like is after people use the chatbot and they ask us some questions, and maybe there's a question that doesn't answer really well. People just contact us via the contact form and it's like straight into our inbox. So it's usually within 24 hours and they get an answer back. But I like that like staged, uh, sorry, if I was using it, I'd like that staged approach to be like, this is an answer I get within 30 seconds. This is an answer I get within 24 hours. This is an answer I get if I book a consultation Hmm. in a week's time, you know. A lot of people are worried that it takes people's jobs, you know. But I suppose some of the thought leaders, and I hate that phrase where people are thought like, leaders. I think you can only be called a thought leader when you're dead. I don't think. Yeah, unless, retrospectively like. Yeah, you can call yourself a thought leader anyway. But maybe, unless you do something crazy, other people can maybe call you a thought That'd leader. That would be a banger for an Instagram boy, wouldn't it? What? Dara Fitz, co-founder of Secret Strength. Thought leader. Thought leader. But that would say, <laughs> for, yeah, martyred in 2024. I feel like you have to be either in an industry that's basically brand new that nobody knows anything about. Yeah. 
so your thoughts are leading people's opinions about so like mm. <clears throat> maybe if you were in nuclear maybe if you were putting out stuff about the future of humans and nuclear fusion yeah and that was your speciality i think you could be a thought leader there i don't think you can be a thought leader in i feel the like we're economics of squats. fitness yes the we really need to finish the squat book Hang on a minute. What was my I just, thought I there? forgot. I haven't thought about the squat book in a month. Well, we did start making an entire app. Yeah. But the the thing a lot of them are saying is that, oh, it's taking jobs or whatever. But the thought leaders are the people who I'd listen to sometimes are like, no, just use it to do your job better, yeah. you know. Your man, the guy who heads OpenAI or whatever was on Rogan. And wasn't really that interesting, to be honest. Some of it was good. He but was remarkably normal. That's what he wants you to think. Which he was is just strange. so he had a little earpiece in there, and yeah. they were asked. So as Rogan's words were coming in, ChatGPT was telling him what to say to be normal. Uh, this is hilarious and kind of on the same topic, right? So Lex Friedman mm-hmm. had the Zuck, Mark Zuckerberg on the podcast recently. Yeah, like a week or two ago. Lex has gone completely off my algorithm. Is he? Don't I? Listen. I like him. I enjoy his dulcet tones. But anyway, they did the podcast. In the meta. Is it the meta? I feel like I've just said the Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> On the YouTube. But they did it in like the meta universe and they both did it in VR. But apparently the VR has gone so insane now where Lex felt like he was like every few minutes to be like, sorry, I completely forgot you're not sitting in front of me. No so way. like facial expressions, gestures. And when he took off his VR and Zuck was naked, was that weird? <laughs> or was but it- Zuck was like hundreds of miles away somewhere else. No way. But so I was listening to it as I was walking the dog and Zuckerberg was talking about the AIs and different AIs they're training. So they're training AIs to be like virtual assistants in the meta universe. Yeah. So And then they'd have AIs that would be like tour guides, AIs that would be like really weird, like comedic AI that you could add to your friend's group chat to spice it up a bit and make it a bit funnier. Which is the saddest thing I've ever heard of in my entire life. But people have less friends than before. Yeah. A lot less, a lot more people are single for longer. Yeah. Less likely to have families, get married and stuff. Like, this kind of thing is going to be... That's pretty sad. It is going to be pretty sad. But anyway. Yeah. The Zuck said, you know I'm here on the other side of this VR and I'm not an AI. And then in my head I was like, oh my God. Do you know? This isn't the Zuck. It wasn't him. No, sorry. It definitely was him. Right. But how fucking baller would that be if you were like, yeah, you can have a Q&A. We'll go live on Instagram now. It's our live on YouTube, mm-hmm. The Seeker Strength yeah. Q&A. And then after like three weeks of that, we're just like, oh yeah, lads, we're live all the time, 24 hours a day for three weeks. And then people are like, oh, what's going on here? And we're like, oh, it's the ultimate coach bot. It's how insane life. would that be? I don't know. I think things are going to get kind of weird, to be honest. Well, things are getting weird already. Things are kind of weird now, aren't they? Yeah. The, yeah, that's just, no, I don't, um, yeah, I don't, I don't like Zuckerberg. He is not a human. He's not a human. <laughs> Do you know what's after getting so much better, and I only realized it last week, is voice recognition seems to have taken a massive leap in the last couple of months. The auto captions on Premiere Pro are incredible. This, I just noticed it the other day on Google Maps. Yeah. Like, ask someone to bring you to Noble Graveyard. Yeah. And it will know where Noble Graveyard. I don't even know where it is. It's 5k from my house. Yeah, and it took you there. Yeah. Well, it's highly specified pieces of software, you know, so you could just never keep up with it. I think the big thing is what I think is going to be one of the best things for most people is your health assistant, your personalized, mm. whatever form that ends up being. I think that's going to be the most because I think, and I said this a few times in the podcast, doctors just aren't really caught to get anymore <laughs> if for the most part. For like, acute trauma stuff like you've stabbed yourself with a knife that's great you know but if it's like long term chronic disease you're trying to fix things or stay healthy or get or they just aren't really it's that chronic stuff is the yeah but like optimization as opposed to staying alive Mm. or getting you back to normal like you know if you want to be the best position you can be in healthcare just isn't cut out for us you know and I'm not one of those people who are like we, like Greg Glassman was on Mark Bell the other day and I listened to the first 10 minutes of it and it's like we don't have healthcare we've uh, as he said we've like a pill industry or something or 
or uh, and it's generated to keep people on the pill uh, like pills and stuff like that. So yeah. I, I don't believe that shit to be honest. I, no, I definitely not over here. But I'm I do think the future where it's like personalized not medicine but yeah. like personal, functional medicine. Personal health assistant or whatever. It's probably gonna be the most useful thing because lots of people are unhealthy. I think what you're talking about there is like the difference between a mechanic and somebody who tunes cars. Mm-hmm. Like a whatever, a tuner, whatever it is, a custom car builder. There's a big difference between a mechanic and that. Like you can ask your mechanic, will you put a turbo in this for me? And he'll fit a turbo or whatever. Can you fit this new ECU or whatever it is? But they're not, like they're mainly there to fix cars, service cars and put cars back in the road. Mm -hmm. Versus somebody who's going to, chip your M2 and make it a thousand brake horsepower like if only if only the 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 most mental thing about this is nobody's in control there's no one steering the ship or as far as we're aware anyway some conspiracy theories might lead you to believe but there's nobody directing this you know there's no parents being like okay you're gonna go to school now for a few years like you're going it's time to do your homework now we've had enough of this this metaverse stuff we need ones for health you know but it's I just think, like I think the market dicta- dictates that yeah but that's what I mean. there's nobody I'm not saying what is doing it but I'm just saying there's nobody yeah. responsible there's no thought leader controlling what any of this you know is we're the adults now like it's our job <sighs> I talked to someone recently at a wedding and they were 36 I hope they're not listening to the podcast but they I'm a kids or whatever he's like oh I still feel too young I was like yeah, I did say it out loud to him. I was like, oh, "Come on, come on, <laughs> come on!" You're twenty six. The at the moment, I feel like so. This is a big change. I feel it's going to come. I think this is going to this is going to hit hard. Oh my god! So at the moment, people are really willing to pay with their attention. Like they won't pay for YouTube Premium. They'll pay with their attention. Yeah, they'll pay with that thirty seconds to two minutes of ads on each video. Same thing with Spotify, same thing with a load of other stuff. They'll pay with their attention because that's not what they value at the moment. Yes. I think as people become more and more isolated yeah, and more and more constantly plugged into everything, that attention or those minutes of attention will become way more valuable. And then they'd rather pay with something else, some other form of asset, you know. Their bodies. <laughs> and whether I'm... that's cash, whether that's whatever it is. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think when that starts happening things will change an awful lot more in terms of how people look after their health, how... Did you... <laughs> <Go> on. <laughs> how people look after their health. Yeah. How people decide to, like, choose careers. Yeah. Stay in careers for longer. <laughs> Go on. Did you make much money stripping on the metaverse? <laughs> <laughs> or did you, like... Did, did it work out for you at all, like, or... You can be. It a, did work. You, you can be what? a hot girl. Like you, you don't know need what? to be. For the money I made while stripping <laughs> on the metaverse, I think I gained more than just money. Like the tetanus shot was expensive, wasn't it? Tetanus, right? Uh, are, are you saying right? As in, go back to the conversation. Right, we must go. No, right, we must go. Okay. Thanks very much for listening. Thanks very much for listening. If you want training programs, if you want to see that class coach bot, go check out the Secret Strength app. Mm-hmm. It's the links down below, Google Play Store, and the Apple App Store. Yeah, if you're someone who needs to get stronger. Or be better at your sports. If you're currently unhappy with the numbers you're lifting. If you feel like people would like you more if you were stronger. Also, if you're somebody who always gets questions asked to you by significant others about their training or mm-hmm. friends or whoever. If you're like the person in the group people ask questions to, just like just get the Seeker Strength app. Just get the Seeker Strength app. It will answer all these questions. Get the Seeker Strength app. Thanks, guys.